everyone, welcome to Mandy's Mess. I am Mandy and today I want to talk to you about co-parenting with your ex. It's a topic that I don't see a lot of good information on when it comes to YouTube. I'll probably be writing a blog about this as well. But it's something that I'm really kind of passionate about, um, whether it comes to my um, ex-husband or my husband's ex-wife. There are a lot of things that a lot of people don't think about when they're communicating with their ex or just things that things that come up with your kids. And so I kind of wanted to shed some light on some of those topics. So I have kind of 10 tips for um, co-parenting with an ex. The first tip I have for you is to be gracious and considerate. Um, for both um, my ex and my husband's ex, we have to um, we have to treat them both very differently. But you just need to be very considerate of that other person. Maybe they have someone new in their life that um, they are trying to develop a relationship with. Maybe they have something going on. Maybe they've got. So they're switching jobs and they have new hours. So when it comes to visitation or just like the kids spending time with them, being gracious and considerate and almost breaking your back for that other person is a very good thing for you to show to your ch children that your ex, their other parent, um, has value and that you're going to give them that value and whatever leeway so that way in future relationships whether um, they go through a breakup or something like that you still need to treat another person like they are valuable and like they um, deserve to be treated so being gracious when it comes to visitations holidays um, just driving back and forth, that is all really very, very important. So just remember to be considerate and then be gracious about it. Don't be begrudged about, um, whatever you're needing to maybe bend over a little bit more than you want to. On that topic of being gracious, you have to learn to swallow your pride. Um, you cannot agree with your ex all you want, but there comes some time when you will need to swallow your pride in that conversation that you are having with them and try not to have it via text because my goodness, some things are taken so far out of context. You just need to make sure to swallow your pride. There are some arguments worth having and there are some aren't so just make sure that you are not being prideful when you are interacting with your kids other parent a lot of times after um you've separated from your child's other parent it can um all you consider is what they did to you and it is very hard to actually think about what you might have done to them um in the case of most divorces and most ended relationships, both of you are probably wrong. I know in the case of me and my ex, we were definitely both very, very wrong. Actually me probably more than him um, from the very beginning. And a lot of times I get caught up in, well, he did this and he did this and he's not doing this now and blah, blah, blah. But the reality is that we were both wrong and we both admit it and we're both adult about it. And we are able to put those things aside and work together to do what's best for our kids. Same thing with my ex and his, or my ex, my husband and his ex-wife. Um, there are things that were both wrong in their relationship and those are things that they had to work through. But um, being able to swallow your pride and almost like grovel a little, be almost more sorry than you should be 
um, goes a lot longer. You catch a lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. It is really important when you're co-parenting to remember that both you and your ex love your kids. Um, sometimes you think, you might think that, oh, they don't have their best interests. Oh, they're lazy. Oh, they're this. Oh, they're that. But in reality, we're all just trying to do what's best for them. And so taking a step back from whatever you're disagreeing on and saying, okay, this is why they think that this is better for said situation. I need to respect this. I might not agree with it, but I need to respect it. And remember that whatever they're doing, they're doing because they love your kid. and. There's nothing better than more people loving um, your children. Um, I remember, what was it, that first uh, uh, season of Friends where Phoebe talk, um, was there when Carol and Susan and Ross are all arguing about the baby and who's doing what. And Phoebe just like sits down on the couch, she's like, oh, <laughs> this is so great. And they're like, why is this so great? They're arguing. Um, because there are so many people that love your child and that is a really great thing. My kids now have more people that love them than they could ever want between my ex, his family, his new fiance and her family, um, my husband's um, children, all of his extended family, which is a lot. Um, there is there are so many people that are loving and are praying for my kids. They're really, really blessed. But to be able to take a step back and say that, oh, my ex and whoever they're with, they love my kids and they want what's best for them. Even if you don't agree with that they think is best for them, it's a really cool thing. I kind of touched on this earlier, but I think that this is super important. Um, is to pick your battles. Not everything is the most important thing in the world. Um, things like making every single soccer game. One of the things that I grew up um, and my family valued very much was sports. I always made it to all my games. I never missed anything. Even like when we had to go to mass on Sunday morning, my mom would pray that I wouldn't have to miss a game in order to, so that way we could go to mass. And it was a deal with all of my travel teams that I played on is I had to be able to go to mass and um, God always worked it out. But um, when my ex the other day had my kids and um, my kids Christmas present was so that they could go to Monster Jam at Anaheim Stadium, which is great. Um, and they had a great time there. But uh, Mitchell's soccer game was at 11, no, 10, one of those. Anyways, it was in the morning and I'm team mom. And he says, oh, well, my fiance is going to spend the day with them. This is like their Christmas present. She wants to spend the day with them. I have to work first thing in the morning, but then I'm off at like nine and we were going to spend the day doing activities related to monster truck. And so I really had to kind of like, Take a step back and say, you know what, this is important. And by the way, we had gone to Vegas to see Josh's son play in a hockey tournament the weekend before. So Mitchell missed two weeks of soccer in a row. I'm like, you know what, this is important to him. This is their family time. Okay. I had to really swallow my pride um, and what I thought was right in that particular situation and kind of trust that um, he was doing what was right for them. Is that something that I was going to argue with him about for a long time? Nope. I was just kind of like, huh, all right. So you're choosing to do? The kids were with you that weekend? I can't do anything about it. And I just kind of had to let that go because I didn't want it to steal my happiness. So I really, when you pick your battles, you have to pick it. And anything that you do not choose to actually fight for, you need to completely let go. Otherwise, it will steal your happiness. 
Okay, my next two are very, very similar. And the first one is to pray for your ex in front of your kids. And it's not the type of prayer where you're like, I'm going to pray for my ex because they're an idiot and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's not really praying for them. Um, my ex recently switched or got a second job in order to help make ends meet. And I think they're looking on, um, he and his fiance are looking at moving in together. So he's hustling and trying to get things done. Um, which I think is great. Um, so the other night I prayed for him. We do prayers every night with the kids and we say five intentions out loud. Pray for him, pray for their relationship, pray for their grandparents, pray for their cousins on that side of the family. Um, there is nothing more healthy for your children to see than for you to um, pray for their other parent. And that's something that is really beautiful um, and really meaningful. I know my kids actually really appreciate me praying for their dad and actually my husband praying for him too. And we're all on the same team. We all love the kids. We all want what's best for them. So why not pray that their other parent thrives and does well, because that's only going to set your children up for success. Now the next one kind of goes along with what I was saying earlier where um, you're both wrong is whatever they did to you and whatever they continue to do as far as like not agreeing with parenting is you need to forgive them. And part of forgiving them is actually a lot of what forgiving is, is letting go of whatever wrongs that were done to you move forward and to not wish that person ill. That is really what forgiveness is, is when you're able to wish that person well, and not, it doesn't mean you have to trust them. You're not getting married again or anything like that, but it does mean that you want the best for that person and that you're able to coexist and in this case, co-parent with that person. My next tip is to be open and communicate with your ex when you're trying to parent. Um, being vulnerable, and I guess that's really what I mean more than to be open, is to be vulnerable. I love Brene Brown and um, what she has to say about vulnerability. If you ever have a chance to read any of her books, listen to her TED Talk, whatever it is, she talks about some pretty powerful stuff and um, being able to be open and transparent, even if it's with your ex, I mean, you don't need to lay everything out, but being open with them about, hey, this is what I'm struggling with with our kid. I need some help. I need some backup, something. Um, or maybe you have something going on when it comes to, um, timing as far as pickups, drop-offs, maybe um, some sort of uh, can we switch weekends, whatever it is. If Josh and I all of a sudden have the opportunity to maybe go out of town um, or he has an event for work coming up and I would like to go with him, I mean, I'll just text my ex, hey, we had this come up. Would you mind taking the kids or switching weekends or whatever it is? And if he says no, he says no, but there's no point in trying to lie about it. Number one, the kids will rat you out, or at least I know mine will. We are lying is serious, serious business in our house. We don't lie. And if we do, there are serious consequences. So for me to be able to, um, be vulnerable enough to my ex and say, hey, can you do this? This is what I'm, or I'm struggling with, or I need help with this. This would really help me out. Um, you could be at a point in your relationship where they're like, heck no, but they could, you could be, especially if you've been working on all these other steps um, or tips. Be like, yeah, no, I, I'm okay doing that. Yeah, sure. 
And then if you're the primary parent and they're not the primary parent, a lot of times um, they'll jump to be able to spend more time with the kids. And being able to be open and honest and communicate with them, it's really, really important. Even on something when it comes to, say, like Mitchell's meds, um, he does take medication for ADHD. And um, we had him on one set of meds and um, it was only during the week. And I didn't know until a year after he had stopped taking them that he was a holy terror on the weekends when he was with them. You know, he wasn't really as bad with me, I'm, I'm guessing, because I didn't see what they were talking about. But at the same time, to be able to be open and honest and say, hey, this is what's happening when he's with us, and I think it might be the meds, is something that you most definitely need to be open and communicate about. This is for a lot of my older children and teenage parents. Um, and when you're co-parenting with an ex, take their side whenever you can, because it's building that united front between parents over here, over here, use the wrong hand, and kids over here. Okay, you don't want your kids to play you off of each other, especially exes. Kids will do that all day long, especially once they get to the be a teenager's age. They will play you like a fiddle. Um, whenever you can take your ex's side, take it. And actually kind of make a big deal about it. Not like, oh, I'm taking your dad's side. But be like, no, I support your dad in this. I'm not, we're not wavering on this. This is how it is. Um, we had a situation with one of Josh's boys where, um, his mom, she actually called us for backup. Well, actually not me, not us. I'm a stepmom and we have very different relationships since his kids are older and they live further away. I'm kind of more like an aunt to them in all honesty. Um, but Josh just took his ex-wife's side and he's like, I fully support your mom and whatever consequences she has for this particular situation. And so when you can build that united front to show your kids, they are still the most important thing. You still love them, but you guys are not budging on whatever the issue is. <laughs> but the last thing, if you don't remember anything else from this entire um, video, remember this one thing or actually these three things and it's respect unity and grace respect your ex number one you need to present a united front with your ex and give them grace because giving that person respect shows your children how you are supposed to treat another human being, whether you agree with them, disagree with them, whatever it is. Every human being, no matter what they've done to you, contrary to what you might think or feel, deserves respect. Unity. Whenever you can show your children that there is unity in whatever relationship you are in, whether you're married, whether it's with your ex, whether it's with your parents, uh, friends, whoever is a father or mother figure for them, showing that unity and showing that, hey, we're all on the same page. This is what we believe. This is what we're going to do. It will help to stabilize um, your children and um, kind of give them a feeling of security. So giving them grace is really hard. But let's be real here, we are all not perfect. And for you to give them grace, hopefully they will give you grace, which is actually really, really important when it comes to any relationship, whether it's with your spouse, whether it's with your kids, whatever it is, we are all human. We all make mistakes and so if your ex did something that you don't think is right or appropriate, it's okay to mention it to them, but it's also very good for you to give them grace um, and to show your children what that looks like. Even if you don't talk with your ex about it and say, you can talk to your kids about, well, I might not agree with what 
what everything happened. But you know what? Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's give them some grace here. Um, don't you want, you would rather someone give you grace, right? So just remember to give grace. Now I learned that on the Messy Family podcast. Um, it's this great husband and wife team. Um, neither of them are divorced. <laughs> Talk about um, parenting with an ex, but I thought that it was very applicable in this particular situation. So I will have that particular podcast link below because I thought that it was really, really good. And I will also list um, whatever I have um, mentioned down below. So just to recap, number one, actually it's not in any particular order at all, is be gracious and considerate. Swallow your pride. Remember that you were both probably wrong. Um, you both love your children and they love both of you. Um, pick your battles. Pray for your child's other parent. Forgive your child's other parent if they need to be forgiven. Be open and communicate. Take their side whenever you can and always have respect. Always try and be united and always give grace. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope that it was helpful for anyone who is starting like a new co-parenting situation. I know it was really tricky for me at first, especially when um, you're just coming out of the relationship. It just feels like a whirlwind of hurt and he said she said and all of that so um comment down below if you have any other advice i would love to hear um anyone giving more advice or if you disagree or disagree with anything that i said everyone has different situations um from my personal experience i'm hoping to help some of you other mamas that might be um starting to co-parent with an ex i'm praying for you all i hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day and hopefully actually not hopefully i will see you in my next video